Hey everyone, it is Jesse from the Tasty Team, and today I'm going to be testing out five famous celebrity nacho recipes to see which one is actually the best. On today's lineup, we have recipes from Chrissy Teigen, Guy Fieri, Alton Brown, Rachel Ray, and even one by Snoop Dogg. We measured out all the ingredients exactly as the recipe says to, and we got three rough friends to taste them in a blind taste test. So, who has the best nacho recipe? Let's find out. First up is Chrissy Teigen. She starts by scattering thinly sliced shallots in a heat-proof baking dish and pouring oil over them so they're completely submerged. Take that, pop it in the microwave, and you're gonna cook this just until they start to turn golden brown and get crispy. This happens fast, so keep an eye on it. After that, you're gonna strain it and then put the crispy shallots on a paper towel lined plate and save those for later. Put a little bit of salt. Next, you're gonna heat some oil in a skillet and you're gonna add onions and cook them until caramelized. This takes a while, but be patient. Towards the end, you're gonna throw in some thinly sliced garlic and cook that for just a minute longer so all the flavors melt together. Transfer that all onto a plate and add a little bit of oil back into the pan. Add a ton of sliced mushrooms and cook those just until all their water starts to purge and they get nice and brown. To that, you're gonna add oregano, cayenne, chili powder, salt, and pepper and cook it for just a bit longer so all the flavors get nice and aromatic. Add the onions back, stir it all together, season it up with a little bit of salt and pepper, and take that and pour it right on top of some chips. Scatter those around, and add shredded pepper jack cheese, as well as shredded sharp white cheddar. Add some jalapenos, and pop that in the oven. Once that's out of the oven, garnish with a bit more jalapenos, some tomatoes, scallions, and the crispy shallots you made. And there you have it, Chrissy Teigen's vegetarian nachos. Wee. All right, let's check this out here. Okay, I'm a big fan of nachos, so these better be good. So I'm seeing mushrooms, which I'm not super jazzed about. Looks promising. It smells like an omelet. Okay, so this is definitely not like a, a Moe's, Qdoba, Chipotle kind of classic nacho situation. I just think it's like a hard no in the mushrooms in nachos. I was kind of surprised that it tastes as good as it does mean that there is no meat. It holds up, it's a, it's a nacho. I would call this a nacho. It's not like offensive, um, but it's also not like exactly what I think a nacho is. Up next is Guy Fieri with Guy Italian nachos, which is perplexing because he starts by frying wonton skins in a heavy bottom skillet until they're nice, puffy, and browned. I flip them halfway just so they cook evenly, and then we're gonna set those aside. Next up, he makes an Italian style salsa by combining peppers, tomatoes, red onions, parsley, capers, pepper juice from the jar that the peppers came in, minced garlic, olive oil, and seasons it up with a black pepper and a pinch of salt. Set that aside, and in a skillet, heat up olive oil and add both ground beef and Italian turkey sausage. Cook that up until nice and brown and transfer it onto a plate. To that same pan, you're gonna add onions and garlic and cook it all up until fragrant. Add the meat back to that, mix it all up, and set that aside. In a separate bowl, add ricotta cheese, sour cream, and mix it up until smooth. Put it into a Ziploc baggie and set that aside. We'll use that to pipe it on later. Bring in your wonton chips, half of them, and cover it with the ground meat mixture. Top that with shredded mozzarella cheese, and do that one more time with the remaining chips, the remaining filling, and even more cheese. Pop that in the oven until it's nice and melted, and you're gonna garnish it with salami, basil, prepared salsa, the sour cream mixture, which you're gonna pipe in a zigzag, and garnish the whole thing with green onions. There you have it, guy Italian style nachos. Oh, okay. Um, is this a capers on it? What do we call it, cured meats? I don't know exactly which one this is, but they're always delicious. This kind of reminds me of like DiGiorno pizza. Um, no shade to DiGiorno. I can't tell what is going on, but there is something going on here. Oh wow, that's nice. I have like a very like a pizza kind of taste. It's kind of good. It's really good actually. I can't really taste the cheese, which I don't like. I don't know, maybe like an Italian nacho or something like that. This is the way to go. It goes a nacho so far. This is like a reference to a nacho. This is a nacho concept, but I don't think it's a nacho. Up next is Alton Brown. And as usual, he has a crazy hack to make him just perfect. You take crumpled up tin foil, put them on all four sides of a tray, and then you put a layer of chips down. Top each chip with one piece of jalapeno, some red onions, and sprinkle both cheddar cheese and Oaxaca cheese on top of each one so every bite has the perfect ratio of ingredients. 
Take a wire rack and balance it on top of those four balls you made and do the same exact thing, layering each chip with all the ingredients so every bite is perfect. More cheese and one more layer so you have three layers total. This sounds a bit ridiculous and it's pretty time consuming, but maybe it is worth it. Take the whole entire tray and carefully take it in the oven and bake them until nice and melted. Put them on a serving tray and sprinkle them with chopped fresh oregano and serve them with salsa, sour cream, and guacamole. And that's it, Alton Brown's crazy hack for making nachos. Is this like Jillian Michaels nachos? Uh-oh, right off the bat, it looks like it's gonna be a little spicier than the last one. It's got a little jalapeno hanging right there on the top. It's so sparse. There's so few ingredients on top of the actual chip. This is more like chips and dip rather than nachos. Individual jalapenos on each chip, gross. That's nice. This is more of like a classic nacho, I feel. Oh my God, it's so spicy. Wow, that spice from the jalapeno is really coming through now. <laughs> That's nice though. This kind of nacho is the kind of nacho that I would make like after school for an after school snack. The sour cream really helps cool down that jalapeno. If I ordered this at a restaurant, I would be disappointed because I could go to the store and get some Tostitos. I do like how each one of them is like already like pre-constructed in a way and then you get to choose whatever toppings that you want on the side. Uh, I feel like it would definitely take a little bit of extra effort, but all in all, it's definitely worth it. Next up is Rachel Ray. She starts by making a homemade pico by combining tomatoes, jalapeno, white onions, chopped cilantro, and a bit of salt in a small bowl just so it's all evenly combined. Set that aside and heat olive oil in a skillet. Add garlic, onions, jalapeno, and cook that up until fragrant. To that, add ground sirloin, and break that up so it doesn't clump together. Add salt, chili powder, cumin, cayenne pepper, and stir that in. Add black beans, mix it all up, and you're gonna keep this on low just until we're ready to assemble. In another pot, start melting some butter and add flour to it to create a roux. Pour in some milk and whisk that up until it starts to thicken up a little bit. Add shredded pepper jack cheese, stir that in until it's nice and creamy, and take that cheese and pour it right over a layer of two different color chips. Top it with the meat mixture, the homemade pico, sour cream, scallions, black olives, pimentos, slices of fresh avocado, and a bit of hot sauce, and Rachel Ray's nachos are done. Okay, this looks like what I want it to look like. So we got some meat, we got some beans, we got some cheese, we got some avocado. Just from the looks of this, this is my kind of nacho. Look how much meat it has. Mm -hmm. The flavoring is very nice, like the seasoning on the meat is good. I'm gonna do this one. I like this one. The only thing that's a little weird is the cheese. I'm not sure if it's like actual cheese or if it's like melted queso or something like that, but I think the beans really does it. It gives it like that Mexican touch. This is the most like traditional nacho so far. I feel like it's, um, even though it is heavily packed and I kind of I, I like that, I feel like it's overly packed in a way where it's just kind of super sloppy. This has layers of flavor. This has all the elements of what I think a nacho has. Um, I love black beans, so it has black beans. So that's a plus for me. But, taste is on the money. Last but not least is Snoop Dogg. He starts by heating some oil and adding ground beef to a pan, seasoning it up with chili powder, cumin, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and pepper, and cooking that all up until it's nice and browned. Using a slotted spoon, transfer that out just so you don't have a ton of oil left over. Take that mixture and scatter it on top of chips that are on an aluminum foil lined baking tray. Top with corn, black beans, sliced jalapeno, and both Monterey Jack cheese and cheddar cheese. Pop it in the oven so it gets nice and melty. And while that's happening, smash two avocados with the juice of one lime and season up with salt and pepper. Bring back your nachos, top it with the smashed avocado, as well as sour cream, diced tomatoes, chopped fresh cilantro, and sliced scallions. And that's it, Snoop Dogg's suited and booted loaded nachos. Got some corn, I love corn. Like if I did a Google search of nachos, I feel like this is the most accurate so far. Um, I don't love corn in my nachos. I've got a real good punch of lemon in this one, or lime, it's something acidic, something that really just jumped out at me. There's not really a lot of flavor. I will say there is a lot of guacamole. When it's on a nacho and it covers everything, then it becomes like a guacamole chip, basically. I don't know what herb that is, probably like cilantro or something. Something you know, very, very fresh, very nice, that adds a pretty nice element to these nachos. It's just like plain beans, plain corn, cheese, chips, ground beef. 
I'm a little unimpressed with this one. They got all the elements that I would want, plus the extra supplies of the corn. Yeah, I do enjoy it. Maybe a little too much guac for my taste. So out of the five nachos that I ate, number four is my favorite because it's the most traditional nacho plate. Um, it has all the elements I want. It has a good level of spice. I feel like a lot of them are missing something and I had everything that I wanted. Rachel Ray. Really? That's surprising. Okay, Rachel, I see you. Out of the five that I tried, I think the one that I like the best is number four. It accomplishes the assignment. It's a nacho, it has all the elements, they're all evenly distributed. I like that one the best. Rachel Ray. 30 minute meals, my girl. I'm, I'm proud of that, I'm proud of that. You know, I grew up watching her, love her empire, and uh, yeah, I'm proud to say that I'm a Rachel Ray stan. Out of the five nachos that I had, I might disappoint the people, but I think I'm gonna go with the unorthodox nachos, number two. They were completely different when it comes to any other nachos that I've tasted, and I, I, I really like that. Really reminiscent of uh, like pizza, had like an Italian flavor, and it was really like a, a cool spin to nachos I haven't tried before. Guy Fieri. <laughs> <laughs> I picked Guy's nachos, bro. And he calls them Guy Italian nachos. Guy Italian nachos. Dude, that's, the name is on the money just like the nachos were. Guy Italian nachos for the win. <laughs> so there you have it. Rachel Ray has the best nachos recipe. So which recipe should we test next? Let us know in the comments. Oh yes!